So again, I want to review area under a curve and area between two curves here using integration. So what we're looking for here is we're going to start off area under a curve. And this is post Riemann sums. So we have integration. Um, this is just a quick review. So I'm going to draw an X and a Y axis. We can call it whatever we want. Um, but we can go back to the idea of we might have a demand function. So if I have some curve, and maybe I'll call it, like I said, D of Q, where this is Q, and this is P. That Q is a little bit better. Oh, that is bad. I'm still learning this thing. So let's try the D of Q a little bit better. D of Q. And if we wanted to find the area under this curve, if it is a curve, we might mark off a interval from A to B. And we would be trying to find the area in here. And we looked at that as being a definite integral from A to B of our curve, which we're calling D of Q. Now, of course, that would be an expression or an equation. Um, <clears throat> and in this case, our input variable is Q, so we'd integrate that in terms of Q. And that would give us the area under that curve. Now, similar, we have integration techniques um, there, but similar, we could have a separate curve and do the exact same thing. So this one will be my supply curve, which I will call S of Q. And I would like to find the area under it from A to B. So this region here. So likewise, I could run this from A to B. And use my function and integrate it in terms of Q. Now, something we haven't done is we haven't found the area between two curves. So, let's see what I'm talking about here and get a good explanation of what it would be. So here I can once again have the quantity and I can have the price. I can have my demand curve and we might need a couple liberties here, but this would be D of Q. And we would have our supply curve. Sorry there. Let's go up. S of Q. And maybe now I want to find the area contained between these curves from A to B. And just take the liberty that maybe I'm using the same A to B. So not all the way to the bottom, but from A. Ooh, hard to write straight here. Let me see. A to B. So this region in here. Okay, so not counting this area down here. So what would that look like? Well, it's really everything under the demand curve, which would go all the way to the bottom, except what's under the supply curve. 
So we could have the total area under D, which goes all the way to the bottom, and subtract the area under S. So let's write that out. So we still have our interval from A to B. Now we're going to take that, and we're going to take the top curve. And the top curve here is the demand, and that should be true. Um, so demand curve minus the supply curve. So what this does is you can do it two ways depending on how easy it is. It may be just to make sure you don't get confused. We're integrating this whole thing. So this could be a situation where there's enough like terms where it's better to combine D and S into one expression and then integrate, or you could integrate them separately and then subtract. Um, but this takes the area or the interval from A to B, and it takes the area under D because of the integration, which is all the green area in the first graph. It subtracts the green area under the supply curve in the second graph, which leaves us the area between the two curves um, here in uh, this middle region. Okay. Um, now I want to do this with uh, the linear example I may have used before. Okay, so I'll pause for a second there to load something else up, but I'm going to move over. And in a separate video, I've used this example before, so we'll just kind of take some of the information um, as fact. But what I have here is I have a demand, um, not a curve, but a line. So much easier to show things with linear functions, but this demand curve, I'll call it a curve, but it's a line, was 500 minus 4Q. Okay. And the supply curve, or line here, was 200 plus 5Q. And something we looked at was finding the equilibrium point. That might be more fun to zoom in. Um, but we could set these two equations equal to each other to figure out where they intersect. And that intersection would be make 33 items, sell them at $365 each. And just using this as an example, we'll talk a little bit more about what it means in a separate video, but just showing that we can find the area under curves. Um, let's see here. This has an X of, well, in this case, a Q of 33. So basically, we're trying to figure out this area in here, this little triangle region, which will run from 0 to 33. Now we could do that separately for the demand and the um, supply. But let's just work it out here. So the demand is the top curve. That was 500, excuse me, minus, let's fix this, 4Q. And then we're going to subtract off the supply 200 plus 5q and that would be in terms of dq so as i said we could we've got basically four things here it'd be nice to distribute that negative um, so we could integrate the four things separately then plug in the 33 and the zero but what i like to do here even though it's probably not any saving any work in an example this small is go ahead and combine things so 500 minus 200 would be 300 and then negative 4q minus 5q would be negative 9q and i can integrate here 
So I would get 300 Q, that's a reverse power rule. And then I would have 9 halves Q squared. And it'd be a plus C, but since I'm plugging something in, we'll run it from 0 to 33. Um, so reverse power rule on those two parts versus reverse power rule on four parts. So um, if I plug in the 33, first we'll let Q be 33. So I get 300 times 33 minus 9 halves times 33 squared. Uh, minus, and then I'm going to let Q be 0. It's insignificant here because 300 times 0 minus 9 halves times 0 squared. All of that will just kind of cancel out. So let me see if I can move this up a little bit. Trying to find my pointer. Nope, that didn't work. I'll have to figure out how to do that with the pen, but we'll move this up a little bit. So that was kind of messy here. Times plus 33. Um, we'll pick up my calculator here. So I got 300 times 33, which gives me 9900. And then we'll have minus. 33 squared times 9 divided by 2. So, ooh, for me 900.5. So the area between those two curves will be the difference of those two. 9900 minus 499, oh, excuse me, 4900 and a half. Let's make this now a little bit better. So this is, if I've done it correctly, 49.99 and a half. So what is that? Almost 5,000, 4,999 and a half. So that would be the area between those two curves. That may seem rather large, um, but area is a two-dimensional um, quantity and um, this stretches for quite a bit. It's um, a little hard to see what's going on there since it's not zoomed in. Um, but it's a, a lot of space in there. We, if we shrink it down, it may not look like a lot of space, but it'll be a large number. So we're going to use that area between curves to kind of solve some other problems dealing with finance in a little bit.